What's up guys, it's Buddy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Dell Chromebook 11. So, if you were wondering just right off the bat why there's a white line down the middle of the screen, it is because I'm on a ping pong table. That's right. Anyways, so this is the Dell Chromebook 11. I've had it for a little while, just so I can get a good feel of how it performs. And so, so far I'm pretty happy with it. There are a few things that I would like to change. Not too bad of a device overall. So, let's take a look at it. So, over on the left side of the device, we have the HDMI port, two 3.0 USB ports, the headphone jack, and then the charging port. On the right side, there's not much of anything except for an SD card slot and just some fan, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. On the top, we've got the Dell logo and the Chrome logo. On the bottom, you can see we've got this one long fan. And let me tell you, it does get hot under something like either the table or like a pillow or something when you're working on it. These two little ridges just hold it above whatever the surface is on. And so, has some screws. The sp um, these are speakers. It kind of just comes out of the whole bottom side. And so now let's take a look at it. So here we have the keyboard. And so this is like the standard uh, Chrome OS keyboard with the big control and alt keys, the search key, forward, refresh, full screen, and see all the open pages buttons as, long, as well as the brightness, sound, power button. The power button, all you have to do is just hold it to turn it off or just tap it once to turn it on. Pretty simple. And let me tell you one thing is that this thing does power on and off very easily. Like literally it's like seven seconds to turn on and off. It's pretty darn awesome. This thing is a definite fingerprint magnet. As you can see, lots of fingerprints along the sides after using this. Very lightweight. First, the version I got, I wanted a more powerful one, so it has 4 gigs of RAM along with like the fourth generation Intel Celeron processor. It does not have the full HD display. I could have opted for that, but that's like $100 more and I did not feel like I needed that. Now I'm kind of wishing I did have it to be honest, because sometimes these colors can get a little bit of washed out. There's the brightness. I do wish that I did have an HD dis display on this. Windows start button, sort of. It's kind of like the menu. This is the your app tray. And it does have Google Now. See so if you say, OK Google, and then you can search from your voice, which I think is pretty sweet. So if you just head over here to the settings, you have a limited amount of settings. This device is pretty darn good though, I'd say. So what you got here is a pretty much simple browsing machine. This is Chrome OS, which means that it only runs Google's Chrome OS. It's pretty much similar to Apple's iOS. There's no really third party installations except for like PDFs and Word documents and stuff like that. It can read Word documents. But say you wanted to install Minecraft, you'd have to go through an extensive process of installing Crouton or another launcher that you could dual boot Chrome OS. And I did try that. It's very complicated actually. Very complicated. So I did, I erased that and did start it over. So as you can see here, it's, it's pretty fast. I mean, if we go to our, I mean the keyboard is pretty punchy, so I like the keyboard, I like the little sounds of it, this little touchpad, you can, it's pretty good, I didn't, and the screen isn't touchscreen, not touchscreen, so that means it will be more sturdier, it's, it's very sturdy I'd say, and I have played around with the Acer uh, C. 720p, the touchscreen Chromebook, and I'd say you don't need a touchscreen when you go for Chromebooks. You don't, because there's no reason to get one right now. 
So, this is our new website, actually. Check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description. It's pretty sweet. I have some important events, deal alert, event, or dates to be aware of, upcoming videos, poll, stuff like that. Anyways, so it loads pretty fast, which I like. So, it is pretty good in that regards, which is what its main purpose is. So, if you think that you're going to need like a device that you just basically just web browse, email, this, that, this will be very helpful to you. Now, if you want to play online games at all, like literally at all, if you're thinking about playing an online game, get a laptop. Get a Windows or a Mac, something. Don't get a Chromebook if you're thinking about it at all. If you're not, then this is perfect. Anyway, so the video editing and stuff, and picture editing, like I use Pixel Editor, and this actually works really well. You can start with a new image or open an image from your computer, and this works like really well. Like I made this with it, this with it, I made this with it, like I made, I've made like, it's like Photoshop, it's so good with Photoshop. Because it has all the Photoshop tools along the side. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description as well. The battery. The battery. This is important. Very important. The battery is very important. It is very good at battery life. And I would say that on an average day, this thing would probably last you easily a day. Easily. I mean this, as you can see, says I have 34% and I have three hours left on that. That's crazy. This thing lasts so long, you'd pretty much have to, I have had to plug it in once before the end of the day, but that is only because I was like editing, searching up YouTube, just going crazy at it and not even doing anything else with your day. This will easily last your day. I've brought it on vacation over like a long weekend and not had to charge it at all. Easily. Like this will last you like so long. The camera on this thing is absolutely awful. Thumbs down terrible. It's pitiful. So bad. It's awful. Google Now on this thing, eh, barely works. Just letting you know. It's it's pitiful compared to the other stuff that you, that you could do. The Chrome Web Store is pretty much what you rely on. You're like, please have this in the games, or please have this app, because if it doesn't, you're out of luck. Most of these things aren't even apps, believe it or not. That's how like simple it is to make a Chrome app, is that if you have like a website that you want to link to, it's like the easiest thing in the world, because that's pretty much what all these things go to. They're not offline apps at all. There's really nothing hardware there's nothing really taking up storage space on here. Google Drive, everything syncs with Google Drive, so you can get it from anywhere, which I love that. Google Drive is awesome because, really, if you look at this, I've used 3% of my 15 gigabytes. You do get 100 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes with this thing. Keep in mind, though, activate it as soon as you can because it does run out. As you can see, I don't have it activated because it ran out because I was like, nah, I don't really need it. And I haven't needed it yet. So you get 15 free, pay this much a month because look what, look what each one uses up. Literally, you can store anything you create in this uh, docs, sheets, or slides, which is pretty much the, um, the word processing for Google Docs. So anything you create in these things, do doesn't count towards your storage. It doesn't count. So that's awesome. Gmail. Only attachments and files sent and received. Photos. Anything bigger than 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels uses it up. And everything backs up to Google Drive. So you can access your pictures from anywhere. It'll save it up so you can just be like this. Oh, I take a picture of something. Oh, I, it uploaded to Google Drive automatically. I can just delete it. Simple as that. So the drive storage is not a problem. So I'd say Google's software on this is pretty good. 
I mean, you get constant updates, it automatically updates itself. You just go to settings, help, and then bam, your device is up to date. It'll tell you if you have another one, it'll just say restart to update, and that's it. Now, with this specific version, it does, as I said, has a fan. So, if you listen, and it just shuts off. Let's see. So, if you listen, um, there is a fan, and it does create some noise. There are new Chromebooks coming out that don't have a fan, which I actually would be interested in, except it has lower processing. And this, as it is, has pretty low processing, but can still manage your daily tasks. I'd say the volume is really good. Really good. I mean, watch how loud this thing is. Like, so I'll pause this. So this can be up, like, full. And if this is up full, like, it's insane. Like, listen how loud that is. Like, what if I turn this down to, like, just below mute and still have it? Oh, and this video will be finishing up that tennis court I was talking about. It's still really loud. Or, sometimes, like, I like to do, I sometimes like to make it almost full here. And then I just like to make it around here, and I can still hear it. Hello, it's Like, it's, the volume is great. Volume is great. I will say that. There are shortcut keys for this. You hold the control, alt, and then a key. So if you hit control, alt, question mark, then it will bring up the list of shortcut keys that you could use. So overall, I'd say this is a worthy device of possessing because it does have great processing power for the price point, this one specifically costs about 300 ish, 330 I think I got it for because of the tax or something. So it is a worthy device. I like it and I use it a lot. I mean, if you, if you, re if you don't, okay, let me rephrase this. Get a Windows laptop if you want to play games or if you just want Word because it will have everything this has and more. That's why it's more expensive. So if you can find a Windows laptop that you like, then, and it's, I would say, don't go over 500 or like 600 for it, then get that. If not, I would say this is actually a really worthy device unless you like Apple. If you like Apple's Macs and MacBooks, and say you want to do stuff on that, like iMovie and all that stuff. I love iMovie. Don't get me wrong, but I love iMovie. And if you want to do that, then I would say just get a MacBook. Because this device will only get you through the day with video editing. Not really. Okay, wait. This device will only get you through the day. Easily will get you through the day because of its great battery. And so, it will get you through the day, but it won't do everything you might want it to do, such as play games. If you don't care about games, this is great. If you care about saying any program that you want to download, <clears throat> any program that you want to download, don't get this, because you can't do it. Other than that, it's lightweight awesome device. I like it and I will be using it. It is a fingerprint magnet. It's got a glossy kind of look to it and it attracts every single thing. Scratch everything. Everything scratches this thing. I would not go as far to saying that it self heals like the G Flex, the LG G Flex phone. I would not say that it self heals Although I will say that some scratches, if you just rub it again and again and again, it seems to go away for some reason. But some deeper scratches, like if you can see that, it doesn't go away. So just keep that in mind. If they made a skin for this that like Dell sold or stuff like that, 
or like dbrand, I'll link that in the description below, that's a pretty cool website. If, if dbrand sold a skin for this laptop or chrome top, whatever you want to call it, chromebook or whatever, chrome top, chromebook, whatever you want to call it, if they sold a skin for this, I would buy it so fast because you need it. You definitely need it. Other than that, I'd say it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments below. That's been it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.